Anyway, so this is all going on. Then, then, then the next IS event comes up, the October IS event, right, of 25, 2005. And of course, uh, Tom Cruise with the 204 one, he's going, yeah, yeah, doing all his, you know, you saw that YouTube video. And then the 205 one is it's even grander, you know. John Travolta's there, Nancy Cartwright, and we get told, right, we're making 16 million this weekend, and you have to help us. This is the boss of the IS. And, um, for the first time I joined the dots. There's projects here that I'm involved in in Birmingham and that I can see happening in Birmingham. If they had a hundred quid, they could actually make a difference to some people's lives, right? And this 16 million quid goes into these mysterious accounts. It disappears and where does it go? Right? And I realize that Scientology's been here since 1950 and actually has no impact at all on society on any positive impact whatsoever. And I think I'm looking at Birmingham and I'm saying, the only person who's done anything really in terms of the whole time Birmingham Org has been there since 1972, the only time it's had any social impact at all, and that's minimal, is me. And it's got no other impact at all. So what's really going on? And it all comes beginning, begins to come crashing home to me. I go back up to Birmingham, this was the end of October, right? And I say there's something strange happening. And I begin looking on the internet over the next couple of few weeks. And I begin seeing what's going on. And I, you know, the whole edifice begins crashing down for me. In March, I popped back home here to Ireland for a couple of days because my, my uncle was dying in uh, um, liver disease. I uh, hadn't been back in a very, 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 very long time. Um, and I hadn't seen him since I was a, a kid, really. Being back home in Ireland, which I really missed and cared about, and I loved Ireland, I, I've been, and I began to realize I, I, I am being kept away from this. And then meeting my family again, and then, you know, oh, they're good people, nice people get back and I'm listening to a lecture of Hubbard where he's saying all those wogs and all those reactive minds seething with strange sexual diseases and passions and I said hang on a sec he's talking about my family uh, you know and then, look it's taken a long time for the penny to drop it's still not quite dropped but it's very very close I go home and in where I was staying, uh, the people on the, the computer, and it was on the internet, right? And so I began to look at the internet late at night, like, like you know, three o'clock in the morning and stuff like that. And I'm reading all the OT levels. All of a sudden it comes to me. All of a sudden, I see it, I see it. The OT levels are a bad science fiction story. It's just science fiction. It's a pure science fiction story. And Howard had put it into this thing as a mystery. No one is allowed to say, like if you're on the OT levels, you're not allowed to say one thing about it except to the people who are delivering the levels to you. No one is allowed to talk about it. It's completely secret. So, and yet, Hubbard says it's the answer to the universe. It's the answer to why man is in such a bad state. And all of this stuff is told to you all the time. This little carrot. That's the only reason I was still there, because I wanted to know what the OT levels were. So, so... And yet I wasn't being given the OT levels. I knew that I would be given them eventually, but well, I presumed I would, but I haven't seen many of my compatriots getting OT levels, very, very few of them. And I read them and I said, my God, it's a con. I realized it was a con. Crashing realization, oh God. I had to extract myself from Scientology at that point. I couldn't just go and say, oh, you're a con, you're full of shit, da 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 No, 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 because here's the thing. I'd, I was in a very respected position within the Scientology community. I was highly respected because I was at heart because Scientologists are fundamental, are good people, actually. They want to do good with Scientology. Scientology directs them away from actually doing any social good, but they want to. So when I was doing good and they were watching me doing all this work, you see, they kind of transferred their own 
need to do something to me, if you like, you know. So I, I saw sort of St. Hill with all the Syrian people there and all the public people. I was very, very respected. I was given completely free reign. I realized a couple of things. I was saying, good, Scientology is a con. I need to get out. But Scientology is a con, and also these people I care about, I need to get them out as well. I actually need to do that. I couldn't just do just me. So I, I knew I had to send a message to Scientology. If I had gone to try and do the routing out, well, one, it would take ages, it would take another two years, I wouldn't be allowed to actually because I knew too much anyway, I knew what we were doing. Um, I knew that I would be, if I just said I was, if I informed them I was leaving, if they thought I was in danger of leaving now, or blowing as they call it, they'd send up a team of people and they would smuggle me into a car and wish me off to St. Hill overnight and put me on the rehabilitation project force, which by the way is a prison camp, uh, it's a Scientology sanctioned prison camp within the organization. Full blown, forget it, it's what it is. It's hard labor and complete confinement and brainwashing, it's just all that happens there. But they degrade you. Fundamentally what happens is you, you then get degraded in front of your compatriots, you see. So I've seen that people I'd respected, high senior execs who I had huge respect for getting put on the rehabilitation project for us. And because of the elitism that is inherent in Scientology, you look down on them. And you go, oh, they're scumbags, so they must have this out ethics. Do you see? And so any standing that they had, any respect that they had, is wiped out for you in an instant. And I knew that, look, if I wanted to send a message to people, I could not allow that to happen to me. And also I couldn't allow them to mess with my head anymore because I knew what they could do with your head, you know. So I said, okay, good. So um, I planned my escape very, very, very carefully. And it was actually an escape and I used the word, you know, with complete awareness of the word that I'm using. And then uh, I had to escape Scientology, um, but I had to make it sudden. So right up to the point of my last day in the Scientology organization, I went there and downloaded a whole bunch of stuff off our computers in the organization and took some papers and, you know, and I attend the Sunday service, which was Hubbard again talking about streets thick with the blood of people who didn't make it a sign. You know, this kind of stuff you see, you see really, and I suddenly realized what he was talking about, that this guy was nuts. I'd never really got it. I'd heard the same lecture hundreds of times, but I didn't really get it. The guy was nuts. It's like Ian Paisley was worse in the middle of the 1970s. You know, the streets were red with the blood of the Catholics. It was almost like this kind of stuff, you know? Really crazy. And I walked out of the, organ of, of the organization that day, and I went home, and the people I was, I was staying with had gone off on a holiday, and that was it. I made my move.